Okay, welcome to a lesson on angles of elevation and depression. Um, this lesson is not 7.5 from our textbook. It's actually in Unit 8 if you're looking at the textbook as a reference. To kind of go back to what we've been working on, the trig definitions are sine, cosine, and tangent, so these should look familiar. Um, notice that the tangent is the only um, function that we have that does not utilize the hypotenuse as a part of the problem. So just be aware of that when you're solving. That's a helpful way to identify. Um, <clears throat> some more uh, anatomy of a trig function. Um, we can use trig functions to find missing sides. Okay, and we are gonna we're gonna stick with these at this time. The main trig fun functions. Um, we can use it to find missing sides if we're given an angle. Um, we can use inverse trig functions right here to find angles. Okay, so there's two different ways that we can solve trigonometric problems in a real world setting. All right, so what is an angle of elevation and an angle of depression, and how are they related? So this little visual visual should give you a, a kind of a, a get started point. But imagine that you are a little um, a little ant down here. Um, ant has three part body parts. You're a little ant down here, and you are looking up at the bottom from that house. You're looking up to the top of the Eiffel Tower. Well, if I'm that ant and I'm looking up at the ant, my eye will make an angle with the ground. And the ground in this picture is given by the bottom horizontal. So I'm making an angle. Maybe it's like 40 degrees that I'm looking up to see the top of the Eiffel Tower. Um, that's my angle of elevation because I am, I'm looking up. Now, on the other hand, if I am a bird and I am sitting up here at the top of the Eiffel Tower, almost better if I was this bird sitting on top of the Eiffel Tower. Um, if I'm a bird sitting on top of the Eiffel Tower, uh, there is a horizontal. So if I'm looking straight out, that horizontal is going to be parallel to the ground. So that's what this line is, the top horizontal, parallel from my eye. Now, if I look down at the ant, I now also form an angle of depression because I'm looking down, looking down at the ant, and my top horizontal, that's considered the angle of depression. And what's true is that the top horizontal and the bottom horizontal, remember that bottom horizontal is the ground, they um, are parallel. The line of sight is forming a transversal between two parallel lines. And then by alternate interior angles, you see the Z? Alternate interior angles, the angle of depression is equal to the angle of elevation. So that's the big idea between behind angles of elevation and depression. Okay, so I have laid out some steps for you to follow to solve angles of depression or elevation problems. So step one, draw a triangle. Step two, label the sides. Step three is to identify the trig function. So are you using sine, cosine, or tangent? Step four, set it up. Step five, solve. And then always label. You're all in, and again, just as a reminder, you're going to use inverse trig functions to find an angle. So here's an example that we can get started and apply these problem-solving steps to. Um, in this problem example number one, we have a point on the ground 50 feet, feet from the uh, foot of a flagpole. So let's just draw the flagpole in. Here it is. There's my flagpole and it is 50 feet from some point on the ground. So flagpole forms a 90 degree angle with the um, this point on the ground wherever whatever it might be. Um, the angle of elevation from that point on the ground to the top of the pole is 53 degrees. So basically if you are an ant on the ground there's the line of sight, and this number in here is 53 degrees, the angle of elevation. The question is saying, find the height of the flagpole. So I need to know what that is. I'm not sure, so we use X. Now I'm going to figure out, got my step one done, draw the triangle. Step two is done. I kind of did those at the same time, labeling the sides. 
And then step three, which trig function should I use? Well, when I look at this, the angle, um, the line of sight is the hypotenuse, and that's not a part of the problem. So that tells me that I need to use the tangent function because the tangent is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay, and that's basically what I have here. So identify that I'm using the tangent. Step four, set up the equation. So it's going to be tangent of the angle. Now the angle in my problem is 53 degrees. That's equal to the opposite side. So if I'm, if I'm at this angle, which is 53 degrees, opposite that is my x. Adjacent to that angle, 53 degrees, is 50. So that's set up. Next, I'm going to solve for the variable. So to solve for this variable, I have to, I've got x divided by 50 at this time, and I'm going to multiply by both sides by 50 to get that 50 to cancel. So on the right-hand side, it does cancel, leaving me with x. And then the left-hand side is 50 times the tangent of 53. Okay, so when I'm solving this in my calculator, I am going to figure out first what is the tangent of 53. So I pick up my scientific calculator and I use, I'm not, I'm finding a, si a side now, so I'm not using inverse. So I just use straight tangent of 50 and I get this, yuck, or I'm sorry, tangent of 53. I get this um, not such a nice decimal. So I get 1.32704482. And that's great, but I don't want to round it at this time. I mean, you could say that it's 1.33, and that would be a, an approximation, but you always want to try to save your rounding for the end because I still have to multiply. I mean, I know that the tangent of 53 is equal to 1.32704482, but I have to multiply that quantity by 50. So while it's still in my calculator as a nice long decimal, I'm going to do times, and then it says answer times, 50. And when I do, I get, now I can round, because now I'm, I'm writing my final answer. I get 66.35 is approximately equal to x, and my units on this are in feet because that's how the problem was given. Example number two. A 20-foot ladder leans against a wall so that the base of the ladder is eight feet from the base of the building. What angle does the ladder make with the ground? Now I'm reading this right away. They're asking me to find an angle, so that tells me I'm gonna be using the inverse. So just as a reminder, whatever function I'm choosing, I'm going to have to use the inverse. So let's first draw a triangle. Here's my right angle. The ladder is leaning up against the wall, so that's actually my diagonal, and that's 20 feet. And the base of the ladder is 8 feet from the base of the building. The question is, what angle does the ladder make with the ground? So that's going to actually be my angle of elevation don't know what it is, so I'll call it x. So draw a triangle, label the sides, done and done. Now step three, identify the trig function to use. Well that 20 is the hypotenuse, so I am going to say that it's got to be either sine or it's got to be cosine. So then the next step is take a look at the um, Take a look at where your angle is, and the only other measurement is the 8, and the 8 is adjacent to that angle. Okay, so I have adjacent and hypotenuse. That tells me I'm going to be using um, cosine, which is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Okay? So let me set it up. I got my identification set up is this. It's cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So I just set that up, feel confident about that. Now I'm going to solve. So when I solve, I'm going to get the decimal for 8 over 20. So. 8 divided by 20 is 0.4. So I've got cosine 
of x is equal to 0 0.4. That's going to make it a little easier for me. Now the next step is to use the inverse function. Okay, so we are um, going to use the inverse function for cosine. So on your calculator, you're going to use the second key and then hit cosine. The second key on our calculators is the green button. And I'm actually finding... Um, all right, let me just show what I'm doing. I'm doing inverse cosine, so, and I'll do it over here too. Inverse cosine. The inverse of cosine of 0.4, and close your parentheses, and you get x is equal to 66.42 to the nearest hundredth, and this is degrees. So that would be my angle that the ladder makes with the ground in this situation, eight foot away on a 20 foot ladder. All right, so example number three, we have a person in an audience watching a high wire routine. So here's, if this little dot represents the person in the audience, um, they are some number of feet away from a platform that is 25 foot tall. But in addition to that, there is a 5 foot 6 inch acrobat standing on top. So I have 25 feet oh, that goes to the top of the acrobat um, plus my 5 foot 6 inch tall acrobat. So that would be plus 5.5. Okay, 5.5 5 .5 because the 6 inches counts for a, um, a uh, half of a foot. So if you need to go back, because I didn't read this problem, I got distracted by the bell, but if you need to go back and read the problem again, then go ahead and do that. Um, so really this height or this side is equal to 30.5 total because I'm including the platform plus the acrobat. And the line of sight, the angle of elevation from the audience member to the, which is the dot, to the top of the acrobat is 27 degrees. And um, the question is, how far is the audience member from the base of the platform, which is here where my right angle is, to the audience member? That's my X. Okay, so I've got my triangle. I've labeled all my sides. And then my next step is to identify the trig function to use. So I would look at this and I would say... Um, all right, looking at my problem, I have no hypotenuse, so I'm thinking tangent with this one because the, the hypotenuse is not a part of the problem. So I would know that tangent is equal to um, soca toa, so that's opposite over adjacent. And in this problem, I'll have the tangent of 27. Is Mercedes here? That's all right. So I have the tangent of 27, that's my angle, <laughs> is equal to the opposite side, which is in this case that combo of 30.5 over the um, adjacent side, which is x. Okay, and we'll solve this. So I identified, I did my setup. Now, to solve for the um, x, I'm going to multiply both sides by x. And on the right-hand side now, my x's are going to cancel. So I have x times the tangent of 27 is equal to 30.5. And now to further solve for x, I actually have to divide both sides by the tangent of 27. Okay, so on the left-hand side, the tangents cancel, and that's now I've got x by myself. So I have to do 30.5 and divide it by the tangent of 27. And when I do, I get x is equal to 59.86. Yeah, to the nearest hundredth, 59.86 is the distance between the audience member and the 
base of the platform and this is in feet. So just double check, make sure that that makes some sense in terms of the problem. Okay, so example number four, we have a diving competition. A six foot, fall, foot tall d diver stands atop the 32 foot platform. Um, the front edge of the platform projects five feet beyond the ends of the pool. The pool itself is 50 feet in length. Hi, Ricky.